the voice. Good afternoon. I'd like to take a moment to encourage each of you to reach under your chairs. Under your chair, you will find a piece of paper taped to the very bottom. If you please pull it out. It's like a modern family up here. Though. Don't worry, this is not open. No one will want to call our vacation. <laughs> What we want to draw your attention to, you pulled one of two things from beneath your chair, assigned at random. You either pulled a large red X, or you pulled a relevant fact to what we'll be talking about this afternoon. That X represents the 50% dropout rate we see almost nationally between the end of your eighth grade year and college. This is a very, very important critical part about what we'll be talking about today, Chris. Those of you who have facts, we'll see some astounding numbers. One of the most astounding is that the, you know, what's the value of a person? And according, excuse me, to Vanderbilt University, which has come up with the most accepted number, that's 8.7 million. That's what a human being is worth. When we look at economic impact, this is huge, particularly for an area like Western Massachusetts. What you'll also see is that for every year that a student does not complete a degree-based program, associates, technical, or otherwise, it's the equivalent of $70,000 in lost wages every single year. So what we're encouraging all of you to do is imagine the world with one less plumber, one less technician, one less nursing assistant, one less CNA, because this is the group that we're talking about today. So we here are the Canaries, as you heard Don introduce, and we had the honor of working with Westover Job Corps, and together we built a project called Step Together. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our team. We have Angie Rios from Mass Mutual. We have Jen Turner, who is our resident entrepreneur and person always challenging us to really think outside the box. Excuse me. We have Nathan Bassinet from Sisters of Providence Health System. <laughs> we have Patty Hensad Mihani from Smith College. And last but definitely not least, we have Maria Pupolo from the city of Springfield. Thank you, Nick. Um, our goal our goal as mentors to the students at Westover Job Corps was to imagine a world with one more. One more plumber, one more mechanic, one more carpenter, one more nurse. Our objective was to improve the attrition rates for these at-risk students and to help them ensure that they would not become a statistic. When it came down for us, as, group to, as Team Canaries to select a team project. Our selection process was quite simple. Our two primary criteria in evaluating each proposal were the emotional appeal of a given project and organization and our ability to provide the technical wherewithal for a given project. We selected the Westover Job Corps Step Together project because we collectively were interested in this specific project and felt that we could make a positive indifference in the lives of these youths by empowering them to become future leaders. Our vision for the students became apparent upon learning more about the project and the new needs of the students at Westover. We established a vision statement with the objective of empowering at-risk students to complete a degree-based vocational tech program and reach their maximum professional potential. Through a series of skill enhancing and confidence building sessions, which you're gonna hear a lot more about from Jen, we aim to fulfill our mission for the program as well. Our mission was to strive to provide Westover Job Corps students a supplemental program designed to promote degree completion through the use of a skills-based leadership curriculum, creating small group shared experiences, and providing engaged mentorship. And now we will hear more about our journey from Angie. Thanks, Marina. Having a clicker. Yeah. Do you want a microphone? 
Can you guys hear me? I'm pretty loud. I tend to project. Um, so our initial meeting was to meet with Alice Buckner, um, who unfortunately is not here right now with us. And Alice is the business and community liaison for Westover Job Corps. Um, when we first met with Alice, the purpose of our meeting was to really understand further around the project proposal and what our leadership could bring um, to the students at Job Corps. What we um, quickly uh, determined in our conversation with Alice is that there was a retention issue um, at the school. So similar to what Nick just shared, the average dropout rate at Job Corps was 25 to 28%. So Alice was really looking for a group of leaders in the community that can help influence and drive um, the, the students to want to become more engaged. To put things into perspective, Westover's um, student population is around 200 to 300 students, um, and it can stem up anywhere up to 400 um, students. A big key area with Westover is that they are a federally funded program. So this particular statistic is one of the success criteria for the program to continue to be funded. Um, so after the meeting, we quickly gathered, uh, obtained information, and, and met as a group to try to come up with a curriculum um, that we could help influence and entice these individuals to really become more engaged and stay um, and graduate from the program. Um, during that meeting, I would say we quickly determined that our group dynamics um, might be um, challenged a little bit. Um, up to that point, we had just worked with the, with the baseball card. And one of the things that we determined was at that meeting, we were kind of doing things in a bubble. Um, and we were trying to create a curriculum for the students, and we weren't on the same page. Um, however, we still progressed during that meeting and created a curriculum that we wanted to present to Alice, who was going to um, start to look for 10 at-risk students that we could work with um, throughout the next several months. I'll tell you in just one minute what those X's represent on the screen. Um, but in mid-January, we went back and we met with the students uh, at the Job Corps uh, facility. And the goal of our meeting in, um, with the students was really, we really wanted to hear from them what is it that they're not connected with the Job Corps and they really are dropping out. A lot of these students had already dropped out. They came from <coughs> rough backgrounds. Um, so now they had another opportunity and they weren't fully engaged in that opportunity. So when we met with the students, um, they are very honest. Uh, we were kind of struggling. Are they going to give us enough information for us to really establish a sustainable program? And they were more than honest. Um, when we left that meeting with the students, what we quickly identified is, well, there's a lot going on with these students and we're not sure if we're going to be able to create a program that really would focus on all of their needs. Um, in particular, there were personal situations outside um, of, of, of the facility. They also had um, substance abuse issues. They didn't necessarily like the location of Job Corps, the teaching structure. So we quickly had to take a step back and say, what could our skill set actually bring to this group? And we really wanted to focus on career development um, with those individuals. Again, our group dynamics, I think, were even challenged further. We were swirling a lot. We were struggling to be on the same page. Um, so we had to check and adjust a lot throughout um, the next few months to really come up with a good program and bring everything that Leadership Pioneer Valley was um, offering within our own team dynamics. Um, the 10 X's that are showcased here represent the initial 10 students that we met with in January. Unfortunately, not one of those students came back when we met with them in March. Um, so they did represent that, that retention issue. I'm going to hand over the presentation to Patty, who's going to really walk through a lot of our group dynamics in the next couple of months. I don't know if I can project through the others. So I'm, gonna, I'm coming up to here. Hi. So um, in mid-February, um, we were in our implementation phase of our program, and what we really realized is that um, we were a little fractured as a team. We weren't really going in the right direction. We had misalignment we didn't have, with our goals. We weren't communicating effectively. So if for the LPV members, you know about the team um, performance model. So we went quickly went to that, and we started saying, where are we on this? And, we realized we thought we were implementing into that phase, but really, truly, we needed to go three steps back, which a lot of you remember Ingrid talking about in September, that there's going to be points. We never thought we'd be there, but we were. So we had two special meetings. We met um, two times for um, over a couple hours each time and really worked through it, 
put all the LPV information out there. We all did our research. And what we really <coughs> realized is that we needed to go back and really define who were we were as a group and define our goals. So that's where we started. And um, also, our communication styles are much different. And we had to come to agreement of how we are going to communicate, how we are going to effectively listen to one another and redefine our our just our group process moving forward. So this was a critical point in our team's process and it was really a pinnacle point in the whole the, the completion of the project. But what was interesting is um, parallel to that we had just lost all 10 of our students. So we started thinking, you know, maybe we had this vision of what they wanted but maybe we're not really asking and we're not doing enough research. So we went back to the drawing board with these brand new two, 10 students that Alice Buckner had chosen for us. And um, we went, we told them who we were, and we had this old whole orientation again. And what we really went back to is um, defining norms and teaching what we had learned to these students so that they would be engaged. So we had really simple norms that they came up with, which was really simple, show up, be engaged have clear communication, give us good feedback, because we really want to you know, do a great job for you. We want you to get something out of this, but we're getting something out of it too. Um, so we basically started the program over, but from that, we um, ourselves, we um, went forward as far as who was going to be the facilitator for one group, who was going to be the agenda maker, and we worked more as a team. So after that, we worked with every member of the team, worked together, we did multiple meetings, but we also um, questioned every session we had. It wasn't in the beginning, we had this vision, oh, we're just gonna lay it out and that's the way it's gonna work. We became very situational. We realized, you know what, every time we did a session, we asked the students, did, you know, what did you like, what didn't you like, what were the takeaways, did we, you know, do we meet your needs? So our listening skills became a whole lot better. Um, and uh, we did feel that we reached the students. We had about um, a 60% um, rate of, of students that came back time after time. Um, so that was helpful. And um, after we did all the, this process, we realized our commitment to ourselves and to the project and the students to us increased. So Jen's going to tell you a lot about what we actually did for the project. I don't think I can project. Can you hear me or not? No, I need to go to the microphone. <laughs> Not, I don't have a big voice. Um, so we began aligning our activities um, with the students uh, with our own personality traits and our strengths, um, which helped to bring a sense of authenticity and purpose to, um, to our sessions with them. Um, we visited the, on a field day with LPV, we went up to the Franklin County Vogue Tech School and um, we, we said, you know, we've meeting with these students and we've never asked them to show us around the facility themselves. So we had them take us on a tour of their own trades, um, which helped to give us a window into their lives and help to build their confidence. We also went in an activity that would help to um, bring some teamwork together um, and bring some strong bonds. So we thought we came up with the marshmallow challenge after doing some research. And um, we thought we were going to do it in small teams with the mentor-mentee program that we had originally set up. But we decided to break into our LPV groups and the Westover kids. And that would help to give them their own uh, sense of team that they could use after the program and throughout their lives and for us to bring into the program. Um, Um, another easy activity that we decided to do was to do some vision boarding with them, which helped to open all of us up creatively. Um, and this session turned into so much more. We ended up <clears throat> having a, uh, one of the kids brought his keyboard and we all had an impromptu sing-along of Journey's Don't Stop Believin', which I know that none of us will soon forget. <laughs> it was very, very exciting. Um, and we learned that by constantly pushing ourselves, we were successfully building a strong sense of team and trust with the students and with each other, and we began to know what our strengths were and how we could use them going forward. So, uh, so over to Nathan, our closer. Motivation! It's me, I uh, So, where do we go from here? What are our next steps with the program and with the students, our mentors, or mentee relationships? Um, we had our last official meeting with them yesterday. 
and they were all very sad that we were going separate ways, but we're not really going separate ways. Our commitment to them through this program throughout was that after it ended, after LTV ended and the formal part of this session ended, we would continue to be their mentors throughout the next months, years of their lives, whenever they needed someone to call for a reference, or they needed someone to help with resume writing, or just job interview skills, anything they needed to call for help. So they have us to go to as a resource, which is fantastic. We're having a bit of a mini celebration in a few weeks. We're going up to play some mini golf and have um, a picnic and some ice cream with the kids and really just kind of engage with them in a less formal setting and get them out of the Westover area um, because that's one of their desires. They like to leave the campus. Um, and it really kind of, our commitment to them is, is not going to end. And that's what we hope this program moving forward will, will establish. Um, Alice Buckner, who's our liaison, who couldn't be here today, um, shared with us yesterday at our mini debrief that part of the entire, part of the entire job corps um, across the country are part of their program and their, uh, their next steps is to build a similar model, one that's mirrored kind of like ours was, to build relationships between people that are from different backgrounds and different points in society with people who may not have the same opportunities that they did. Um, and so we hope that that will move forward and we'll be in touch with Alice as that goes forward. Sustainability on our end for our particular project, um, three parts we identified as necessary for the next group that comes forward. Um, one is a stringent identification process for the students. As you heard in the beginning, we had 10 students who we connected with and then they weren't there the next time. And so really kind of getting through that is the, the priority. Open and honest communication is key and that's in our group or with the students or with the liaison there. That was one of our issues. Um, and then the ability to, to follow through and accountability for the program itself and from the students, from the mentors, um, and from Westover Job Corps. And so if we sit back and we look at ourselves and our group and what we learned internally, um, as they shared so politely, we had, we had some downs, we had some big downs, but part of the process was building us back up and it was able to be open and honest and we had two hour long meetings and we shared exactly what was on our mind. And it really helped us to build the team that you see today and the team that sang Don't Stop Believing and, and <laughs> the smiling faces we have up in the group. And so we couldn't have done that without Alfonso, mm -hmm. our mentor for our group. And we're just so, so fortunate to be here.